Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 John, 1 John, 1 John, verses 7 through 10. 1 John, verses 7 through 10. The title of the message is, What are you doing with many sins in your life? What are you doing with many sins in your life? 1 John, chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. What are you doing with many sins in your life? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Brother Jake, can you please pray for the message? We ask you now, Lord, that you fill in your speaker with the Holy Spirit, Helping to declare your word unto us, use it mildly so that we can change for the better. And fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help us to not to think about the things that are happening outside or currently happening in our lives or things that will happen in the future. But help us to just, as of right now, just fully give ourselves unto your word, to your preaching, and Help us to hide your words in our hearts so that we're not sinning against you. We ask you, Lord God, if that you protect us from devil attacks. We ask you, Lord God, uh, for your protection and for your mercy and grace to be bestowed upon each and every one of us so that we can fight the good fight of faith until you come back. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So what are you doing with many sins in your life? If your first reaction was that, I don't have many sins in my life, you know, something's wrong with you. What is considered many, right? There's some, there's several, there's numerous, but you and I still have many sins in our lives. And if you say that you don't have many sins in your life, maybe you're only looking at your outward actions. Maybe you don't still. Maybe you don't murder people. Maybe you're not a thief, right? However, inside of you, there's a lot of sins that's going on. I mean, all those thoughts, all those, you know, hatred. I mean, I'm going to list them. We're going to go through it. Just proud. Everything, those are still sins in your life. Until you and I, until that day of redemption for our body to be conformed in the image of Jesus Christ, we are going to be imperfect. We are going to commit sin over and over and over. I mean, that's why our desire and our goal in each day to be sin less than yesterday, less than the day before. But how many of you actually think about that on a daily basis? Some of you think that you're so holy. You know, I think one of the things that Bible-believing Christians always have to be you know, mindful of is that you think you're holier than thou. Literally, you say, I'm not holier than thou, but your thoughts, but your actions are holier than thou, crowd. You know, the worst thing that you can do as a Christian is to give a holier than thou attitude and the testimony to unsaved world as well as your brothers and sisters in Christ. The fact that you think that you don't commit too much sin in your life, devil has gotten a hold of your brain devil has gotten hold of your mind. You have to realize that because of your one sin, you could burn in hell. I mean, in the Old Testament, you committed one sin, you didn't get right by sacrificing, and you died in your sins, you'll burn in hell. So it's not about how much you do, how, much, how less you do, but that sin would have made you guilty. So don't think that, you know, I'm saved, I'm okay. 
that's the type of attitude that, you know, these backslidden Christians always have. And in that case, maybe you're not even saved. Saved person will have Holy Spirit conviction for sure. But if you're living in life of sin and you have no conviction at all, you know, just check. I'm not saying that you're not saved, but you have to check. How in the world a person who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, when they commit sin, they don't feel anything? Or they have no conviction at all? You're supposed to be a new creature. Old things are passed away, but all things are new. 2 Corinthians 2.17. Then as a new creature, you, you will be convicted. But if there's no conviction at all, and you, you don't care about it at all, just check it. Especially young people, you grew up in a church, for many of you. You accepted Christ many times in a sinner's prayer. But if you didn't know what you're talking about, and if you didn't even put your heart into it, you just wanted to finish the prayer because, you know, your mommy or daddy, your pastor was forcing you or you felt like you are pressured to do it. And now, if you were to give a salvation testimony and you don't even know what to say, then check your salvation. Right. Check it. I mean, it's worst thing for you to do is that, you know, when the rapture happens, Lord willing, sooner than later, and you're still here. Right. Right? You're like, you know, may, I'm a thank, I mean, it would be the best thing if rapture happens like right now, you know, while we're praising the Lord you know, during church service. And suddenly everybody's gone. There's blood around you everywhere. And you're left alone. And you turn around. Oh, he's there. Oh, she's there. But where's everybody? I mean, if you are left behind, as they say, you know, keep the faith and die for Jesus Christ, then you, you'll still go to heaven. But it's going to be very, very hard. So why do you even want to take that chance, right? For some of you, sin is a joke. I'm going to heaven, so who cares, right? Just little sin there, little lies, right? You know, just little perverted thoughts. You know, just little, you know, this, that, and that. You just don't care. The reason you are where you are as a Christian, not living for Jesus Christ like you ought to, is because you don't care about sin. Sin is not that important to you. You know, we always talk about heaven, hell, witnessing to others, right? Prayers, and we talk about reading the Bible and all that stuff. Very good. But what are you really doing about sins in your life, right? I mean, Bible says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You're a liar. I'm a liar if I say I don't have sins in my life. And don't be haughty again and don't be proud that, you know, I'm okay. You're not okay. You're never okay. When you think you're okay, you're in big trouble. That's the type of people that devil wants to create in a Christian. That you're an okay Christian. You're fine. Your sin's okay. And unbeknownst to you, you have become that monster who bring bad name to Jesus Christ, bad testimony and you're that monster, when it comes to deny Jesus Christ, you'll be the first one in line. Why do you always think that you're better than who you think you are? That's our problem. That sin of pride that taken Lucifer down, Satan, is always that biggest issue. You know? Don't tell me how to get saved. I'm not telling you except from the Word of God. If our brethren is telling you, it's from the Word of God. I mean, we had great, you know, teaching sessions by, you know, our sisters and brother yesterday. The reason we use Dr. Ruckman's commentary and his doctrine is because it's with the Bible. It's aligned with the Word of God. That's it. That's it. Not because he's a God, right? Not because he's supernatural. I mean, he was smarter than all of you anyways, you know, than me. But he had the humble heart to serve the Lord. And God gave him the grace and mercy to give him the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. In the last days, standing up for King James Bible, he single-handedly saved King James Bible. 
in this country and the world from turning into different versions. So you know God used that person. So we do it. And many people this day and age, unfortunately, comes from a different background. Many, many backgrounds where your salvation is just skewed. Why are you keep on talking about it? Because you are that person. If there was no, if everybody gave same answer, give me your salvation testimony, and you gave salvation testimony according to the word of God, it's fine. But majority of people don't give it that way. America founded King James Bible, gospel, had the right gospel. But many different countries, like where I came from, like Korea, found it in the wrong, wrong, wrong source. Wrong Bible and charismatic. It's all about vision. It's all about dreams. It's all about sounds, right? If you think you're saved because you heard something, it's the voice of God. You know, if you look at the book of Peter, sure word of prophecy in 2 Peter chapter 1. This is better than actual voice of God that you hear. Because this is sure, this is perfect. So if your salvation is based on something that you hear, something that you see, something that you feel, that's the wrong basis. That satanic basis. With that base, you could accept Christ a million times, but you won't get saved. Because you're not 100% trusting perfect work and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God talked to me yesterday, so I'm going to accept Christ. No, you have to repent that out of your mind. Lord, I trusted in my feelings, visions, dreams to get saved. I repent. Repentance it just means change of mind, turning from that way and turning to God. With that repenting heart, you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Bible has a specific verses where it says that you have to repent when you get saved. Repentance directly connected to salvation. So if you have not repented when you're accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not saved. That's not what I said. This is what the Bible says. Let's go to the book of Acts. Because some of you guys are asking, where? So I'll show you from the Bible. You can always argue with the Bible. But don't say that, you know, we're not sharing it or showing it from the Word of God. So if you don't have the right repentance, because in the past, I've shared this before, he's no longer here. I was doing street preaching 20, 25 years ago, and he goes, why are you talking about repentance? Why does someone have to repent to receive Jesus Christ? He was a no repentance crowd. He's like, it doesn't matter. You know, they could do, they could be sinning, they could be drinking, you know, they could be doing drugs, they could be fornicating, adultery, everything. They just have to accept Christ and they're saved. That's not the right mindset. It's like you're telling God, God, I'm going to go out there and kill somebody. Save me. God, I'm going to still commit this, commit that, all these horrible sins. Save me. That's not the right heart. Let's go to Acts chapter 20, verse 21. So, this sin where you haven't repented, it's going to send you straight down to hell if you didn't accept Christ the right way. Acts 20, 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. So you need repentance and then you have faith. Faith commit by hearing and hearing by the word of God according to Romans 10, 17. Let's go to one more. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. So whoever's here, whoever's listening online, you really have to check your salvation. Don't argue with me and don't argue with others. Argue with the word of God. If word of God says to do it, you do it. If word of God said don't do it, don't do it. If you didn't do it according to the word of God, then you're not saved. 
Simple as that. I don't know why people always have to give their own opinion. Your opinion does not matter in the face of the word of God. You and I could give all kinds of good opinions. It doesn't matter when it compares to the word of God. If it's against it, it's wrong. If it's for it, it's right. How easy can it be? A child can understand it sitting there. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So don't get offended if someone says you're not saved because you gave the wrong salvation testimony. It's on you. Maybe God is giving you a chance to get right and really get saved instead of relying on your feelings, sounds, and visions, and dreams to go to heaven, and you wake up in hell. And don't blame me. Don't blame people around you. Blame your pride and blame yourself when you wake up in heaven. I mean, when you wake up in hell, right? Now, I mean, we do wish that you go to heaven. Why, why do you think we preach the gospel? Because it's frustrating to hear people over and over and over again say that it's my experience, my experience, my experience. Your experience will get you to hell, straight down to hell. Only the word of God will get you to heaven. 2 Peter 3 verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So you got to repent. You got to turn around. You got to change. Change your heart and mind. And you set the course from your own ways to God's way. That's what repentance is, right? You cannot stop sinning. Some people have this wrong idea. And some people, you know, especially our church, you know, sometimes you are so strong about it, even Dr. Ruckman, you know, and the other teachers. I mind you, you cannot stop sinning. You can't stop sin on your own anyways. You can't. Your devil's child, John 8.44, you're not. But you could have that willingness, right? You could have that willingness. You need to have that willingness, right? You need to have that willingness to turn around, change your heart, and turn to the Lord. Then faith comes in, Romans 10 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how you get saved, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's how you do it. Very simple. But devil has deceived too many people. Too many churchgoers will end up in hell. Because you, your base is just wrong. You know, don't get angry. Don't get mad. Just reflect. Think about it for a second. Did it come from God? It's my salvation based on the perfect word of God. Or is it something else? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. That's why if, you know, I say recheck, double check, triple check, quadruple check, because you're based on your feelings, you know, your experience, it's because of the word of God. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's start with verse 18. Let's start with verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So this voice of God. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So we're talking about Peter here. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. This man actually heard the voice of God. But he says, no, no, no. There's something better. That's the sure word of prophecy. So if your testimony is not based on the word of God, especially after the Bible is completed, there's no miracles or anything, healings, except through, you know, we do have prayers and everything, right? But not by, you know, you know these healers everywhere out there, speaking in tongues everywhere out there. You know, gone. Bible is completed. Verse 19, we have... Also a more sure utter prophecy, word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Because there are a lot of 
false pastors out there, fakes out there. Look at it. Let's go to verse 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. There are a lot of people just teaching fables everywhere. Hey, you know, imagine if I came up to the pulpit, I said, you know what? I'm saved because God talked to me last night. He walked me through the heavens, showed me the unimaginable things which I cannot utter to you guys, and showed me the devastating effects of hell. I went through it. I can't tell you. It's horrible. But I went through it. And I know that he spoke to me, like how he spoke to Peter, John, right? I, so I heard the voice of God. That's why I'm saved. Trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? There are false preachers like that everywhere. And people follow because they have the wrong spirit in the first place. And their final authority is not the word of God. They want to find some kind of feelings everywhere. It's like, why do you always want to find feelings? Feelings, sounds, visions. So you can't even get saved. And you, you can't even apply this. 1 John 1, 9 is fellowship. As a Christian with Lord Jesus Christ, people who are out of fellowship, you have fellowship with the devil, which is your father. you got to get out of that fellowship. Let's continue. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophets that came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So he's talking about inspiration of God. God used people to write the Bible. Perfect word of God. Now, going back to you know, all the sins in your life, if that is that sin that you don't take care of, right? You know, you, you, you're not going to get saved, right? You, if you don't trust only the perfect word of God, perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ to save you from hell, trusting blood of Jesus Christ, then you can't get saved, right? I'm sorry. If you're always saying that my vision, he actually spoke to me. Yeah, he did. The devil spoke to you, right? right. It's not God. After the Bible is completed, you say, I heard a vision, I saw a vision, I heard something. It's not from God, it's from the devil. How many times do we have to tell you that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. That's why we hear a lot of hate. Because people don't want to put Bible as final authority. They want us to respect your opinion. I can if it's against the word of God. So that's why you don't have to stay at the church. You don't have to listen. You could go somewhere else because there are a bunch of people who's telling you the lies so that you follow the lies and fables and burn in hell. But we do care about your souls. We want you to get saved from hell according to the word of God. And if that's offending you, man, we'll see you at the judgment, right? That's tough. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Let's start with verse 13. So this is warning against false teachers and preachers and pastors everywhere out there. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. If I do contrary against the word of God, I'm a false apostle. You know, tell me about it. Put me through it. That's why you have to pray. When you read the Word of God, and when you're studying the Word of God, when you're listening to the Word of God, and you're listening to the preaching, and if you hear something contrary to the Word of God, you have to ask God to show you that way, right? Because if not, you're just going to fall into this, you know, depth of, how oh, should I say, you know, this puddle of, you know, dungs, and you're just going to be destroyed there. You know, you can't follow a man, I'm telling you. You gotta follow what the word of God says. And if, if a man changes direction from following the word of God, you can't follow that person. 
the Bible does say be followers of man. You know, you, you follow teachings of, you know, you know, Moses, Joshua, Caleb, and all the way down to Apostle Paul and everything because they did the right way. But if someone steers their way, and that includes me, right? I'm not perfect. I could always fall. I could become child of, I mean, not the child of devil. I could be the workers of devil. I could do that too because I'm just a human being. If I'm not careful, if I let the pride get in the way and the sin rule in my life, if that happens, you guys have to steer, still go to the right direction. You can't follow me that way. Because there's so many, like verse 13 says, they're transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ, even though there are false apostles. Verse 14, and no marvel. So don't be surprised. And don't be proud and don't be showy to people that God talked to me. Jesus, I saw him in a vision. Oh, he's in a cloud, right? I spilled the water and that was Jesus talking to me. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Angel of light, the angel of the Lord in the word of God. Genesis 1 to Matthew 1, Jesus Christ. So don't marvel. You know who is the closest to Jesus Christ? It's Antichrist, right? So don't marvel. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Verse 15. So if your testimony starts with, yeah, I saw a vision. And the uh, Lord made me a special person. Right? Wrong. Devil try to make you think you're special. You rely on that thing as your base. Like many of the unsaved charismatics out there, you end up in hell. You will burn in hell forever and ever and ever. It doesn't matter if you have 100% assurance that that was from God, that's from the devil, according to the word of God. So fight against God. Fight against the word of God. Let's see who's going to win. You will lose million out of million times. Verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Their end will be ending up in hell once and for all. Why you follow that? Are you, are you like a reasonable person, logical person? You know, you believe in two plus two is four, right? You know, you, do, you believe that there's mom and dad, right? You know, same mind, right? Get rid of this gender, you know, ideologies out there. Amen. If you're that same person, why are you still trusting Satan his ministers, his false prophets, when it comes to your salvation, when there's perfect word of God. That's it. Know that you're a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins, shedding his precious blood. Believe that his blood can wash all your sins once and for all. And trust him, not in your life. Jesus Christ is in everyone's life. From birth to death, he's everywhere, even in devil's life, this false preacher's life. But you have to accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Just him alone, right? And that's it. That's your basis. Then you have eternal life. Again, we're repenting heart. But if not, I trust, you know, just beyond that, I trust my good works. Because I was born into a Christian family. What's that got to do with it? Just because, I mean, we have young people here. Their parents started coming to church before, you know, they were born. Does that mean that they're saved? They're not. So, but some people believe that because I grew up in church. I was born into, you know, a Christian family that I'm saved. You're not. We, the best way you know how, knowing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, you accept Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, then you're saved. Amen. According to the word of God. He that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, which is 1 John chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. As clear as it gets. So if you're trusting anything other than Jesus Christ, and again, minus your experience, your feeling, the voices that you've heard, right? All the visions and dreams. Get rid of it. If you're trusting in those, turn away from those, right? And trust Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior. It's almost like, you know, someone who was, 
who grew up in a Catholic church, who trusted going to heaven, getting out of purgatory by trusting, praying to, you know, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Bartholomew, trusting Mary and all the good works and all the traditions. But they're like, oh, you know what? Those are all wrong. I repent from those ways. I only trust Christ to save me. I don't trust my church. I turn away from them. I repenting heart. I trust Christ only to save me. Unless you haven't done that, man, how are you even saved? Because what are you trusting? Christ is just a plus one. When Christ should be everything. Yeah. If Christ is plus something to save you in, within your salvation testimony, then you're not saved. That's what the Bible says. And you and I could go back and forth and argue, oh, it's from God or not. But I, could just, I don't, I don't want to waste time in those things. And you shouldn't either, brethren. Just go with what the Bible says. If a person is not willing at first, especially, or even twice, third time, you tell them according to the word of God, that's from the devil, you know, transforming as angel of light, and they don't want to listen to it, just tells me that they don't want to get saved according to the word of God. They want to get saved according to their own desires and feelings and their own way. Your way will always get you to hell. God's way will get you to heaven. So don't take any chances. Like, no reason for you to take chances if you ever came from that kind of background and if you have any type of, you know, how should I say, testimony that's against the Word of God. I'm telling you, there are millions of sincere people who's going to burn in hell. Zealous, passionate people believing the wrong thing. Some of them had multiple chances to get right. Some of them might have only gotten one or two chances, but everybody got ten chance because God is fair. And if you reject that perfect message of salvation according to the word of God from God, then how, what can I say? I feel bad for you. I feel sorry for you. You are going to hell trusting yourself. Again, don't trust yourself. You, you, you and I, our memory bank, our knowledge is nothing, right? How in the world can you understand mind of God? Many people have this false, false thinking that I need to understand God in order for me to get saved. I need to understand God before I believe what the Bible says. Who are you? It's like you're telling an ant, understand me. Right? Yes, you and I are worse than ant. Like, we're like an ant telling a human being, hey, you know, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're going to do. No, you don't. Because we just step on you or we just, you know, push you out of the way. Right? You didn't see that coming. Same thing. As a human being, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't see this coming. Yeah, you did. You're a liar because the Bible says so. And then you are just rejecting the word of God. You know, the, don't, don't try to fool or justify yourself. Only justification comes by trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's it. Why are you trusting anything else? Right? You know, does it make sense that, you know what? In my dream, I hear people screaming in hell. You know? So that's my basis of salvation. <laughs> But you know what, though? Millions of people will follow me. If I post that on YouTube, people are going to go, oh, I want to follow this guy because I have that experience. Because the majority of the people have a dream, right? Sometimes you have bad dreams, you know? Sometimes you have dreams of dying in your dreams. And you're like, oh, yeah, I could get with that guy, <laughs> you know? You know he's, he's trusting, like, dreams a little bit, like me. Yeah, and I'll have like millions of followers and then just grow that way, deceive them and burn in hell, just like what the Second Corinthians says. But no, don't ever trust your dreams. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're, I mean, if, if you're the, the best Bible scholars ever or whatnot, if you start talking about dreams, visions, sound of God, something's wrong with you. 
you are out of line against the word of God. You're that charismatic leader, which you say, I only believe in the word of God. You don't. You are that charismatic leader, person, follower, who's going to burn in hell, trusting your feelings and experience, and you're burning hell. That's why you have to check. You have to double check, triple check. Some people, it's very easy. They didn't know about the Bible. They didn't know anything about religion, but someone witnessed to him. They believe every word that the gospel said, except for Christ. They're, they're simple. They don't, they're not trusting anything else, right? You know, they quote unquote, they were never religious. But some people, a lot of people are religious. Came. They thought they were saved, but they never were really saved, including kids who grew up in the church. And now, one day, they get the Holy Spirit conviction, like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not saved. You know, I've been trusting something else. I've been trusting prayer, you know, you know all that stuff. Feelings, you know, visions, experience. You know, I mean, at least we don't have it in our church. Hopefully never. Like, trusting in tongues, you know? You know, like, oh, yeah. And then I accepted Christ as well many times. That's, that's uh, you know, your experience works plus Jesus Christ. You can't get saved. If you're in that boat, if you're in that thought, if you ever thought like that, then you have to get saved for sure. You have to check your salvation. You know, don't be stubborn. Don't be proud. That will send you straight down to hell. Then if you trust that Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior plus nothing, and then you repented your ways, you know, repented and accepted Christ, and you know for sure that you're saved because your salvation is based on the word of God, infallible word of God, sure word of prophecy, better than God actually talking to you, right? If you're trusting in this, then let's watch out for certain sins, right? That makes us, creates and leads to bigger sins, you know, I mean, you could write it down. Like certain list of sins, you know, major sins found in the Bible are in the book of Romans, chapter 1, yeah. chapter 3, 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, and Galatians 5. So it's actually it's good to review them. That you could check yourself. Am I committing any of those sins, you know? So here are some of the things. There's a lot, but I think that we need to think about it. If you and I were able to check this list on a daily basis. Literally, you know, check mark. Did I commit this today? No, good. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. You, I believe that you live a more holier life for sure. Let's think about it. So first one is a uh, secret pride in being su successful. Sometimes you succeed on a, in a day, right? You get to accomplish certain things in a day whether it's at work, whether it's at school, whether it's at home, right? So you do have those successful days. But pride could get in right away. You know what? I did it. I did it. Wow. I did it. That's a secret pride in being successful. Second thing, you have a pride in appearance or intelligence. Ooh, many of you guys. Before you came to church that you looked yourself in the mirror, like, oh, man, looking good or looking pretty, right? You know, I'm sure you did. And you start getting pride, right? Every little thing, you got to give thanks to God, give glory to God, right? Well, I'm tall, I'm handsome, you know, I'm blah, blah, blah. You know, that's going to lead you to bigger sins. So pride in, you know, appearance, intelligence, feeling an important independent spirit. Don't you sometimes feel so important? I'm an important person, right? You're like, why am I not the center of attention in this room, you know? Why aren't people applauding me, right? You know, they're like, I'm independent. Christianity is all about dependency. You're depending on the Lord Jesus Christ for everything. And the fourth thing, feeling bitter over what someone has said to you. Ooh, because of that pride, you are that important person. You know, you're like, how dare they talk to me like that, right? And then sometimes people don't even mean it. 
any way except for to just say hello. Oh, they didn't say hi to me with a smiling face. You know, they weren't jumping up and down, right? And I felt this wrong vibe from them. What vibe? Are you like a, you know, witch or something? You could read all those things. Feeling bitter over what someone has said about you or talked to you with. Number five, having sarcastic or unyielding spirit. Man, some people are just so sarcastic. You know, when we're joking around, it's, you know, different, right? But their life is just sarcastic and unyielding, right? Their approach is always, a, I guess, a ref deflection. We're not playing ping pong or tennis every single day. Like someone gives you like a right advice and counsel, like, ah, eh, no, nah, no. Nah. Are you that person? Like if someone, even in your family, right, your wife, your husband, your children, your mom, grandpa, your bosses, everybody, your first reaction is always, nah, I know a better way. Ah, no, I do better. You know, such a pride person, profitable person, right? Oh, no, 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 no. They're like, yeah, so you're better than God? You know, next is having a bitter, sensitive, or touchy spirit, right? I don't mind, I think we do need to be sensitive, right? Have some empathy, right? But there's a point where you become so bitter and sensitive. Right? That's why we're brethren just stop talking for each other, right? There's misunderstanding, but one party or both parties just always bitter and touchy, right? It's like, they're like a hot potato. I don't even want to touch them, you know? Even if I say, how are you doing, brother? How are you doing, sister? Oh, my pastor hates me, you know? <laughs> like, oh, man, they don't know my feeling. If they really knew me, they would ask in a different way. I don't know what's the other way to ask, right? And next one is saying and doing things to attract attention to yourself. Oh, well, that's a sin. You, want, you, you know, some people are always saying and doing things to attract attention to themselves, right? That's going to lead to a bunch of sins that, you know, you could read it. If we have time, we'll go over it, like in Romans chapter 1, 3, 1 Corinthians 6, Galatians 5. And this one, especially everybody, and we're talking about men and women, right? Boys and girls. A desire to attract the attention of the opposite sex. Are you that type of person, right? Your desire is to attract the attention of the opposite sex. You just want people to fornicate on their minds and commit adultery on their minds, huh? That's what you are. You're an adulterer, fornicator. If you have a desire to attract the attention of the opposite sex. And especially if you're married, why do you even go that route, right? This one's simple. In a day, complaining and griping. You, can't, you shouldn't complain. You should be thankful for everything. Easier said than done. But if you have complaining and griping day, you've committed sin. Number 10, a desire to quit trying to do right. And a lot of people, when it's the right thing to do, but they just don't do it. They quit. Sometimes, right thing to do will hurt people. Maybe your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your mom, grandpa, your dad, you have to do it. Even brethren, but you have to do it with a loving heart, charity, not this spiteful heart. Because you love him, desire, you have to have a desire trying to do right instead of desiring to quit. You and I shouldn't quit. There's only so few of us in the first place in this world. Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing, right doctrine, dispensational, everything. There's so few. And why do you want to quit because of your sin? Next one, finding flaws and criticizing when set aside and unnoticed. Are you that person always looking for someone's flaw and criticize? That, let the news do it, right? Let the media do it. That's all they want to do. You know, finding flaws and find criticizing when set aside and unnoticed, right? <laughs> for example, like, say our young man here, Nathan, I mean, you know, kids, as they grow up, you got to give them some space to make their mistake, right? Or they're going to go, 
I don't know, crazy when they get their freedom. Sometimes, as parents, you have to allow certain things so that they'll grow and learn from it. And they're not even your kids anymore. You see some other kid do it. And your job is to find flaws and criticize everything they do. And if no one talks about it, you have to raise your hand. Excuse me. You go to their parents, you go to pastors, pastor's wife, you go to your brothers and sisters, every one of them inside the church. You say, hey, did you see that? Did you notice that? I can't believe them, right? You should never be in a business to find flaws and criticizing brethren or anybody else. A deceitful and evasive spirit. You know, just don't lie. I mean, don't lie. You know, a lot of Christians get out of many troubles when they just don't lie. Even when it comes to salvation, you know, people, they go to hell because they lie, right? Do you know when you truly trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, with repenting heart, receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you don't want to look embarrassed. Like, oh, no, no, no. My pastor's asking me, no, no, no. My brother, and I've been coming to church 10, 15, 20 years. It doesn't matter, right? People are a lot more happier when you really get saved than you lead the people the wrong way, lying to them. Why do you lie about your eternity, right? And next one, unwilling to put out for others unless personal advantage or gain is involved. That's human nature. I do this for you, you do this for me. Only reason I did this for you is because you're going to do this for me. <gasps> I did this for you. How dare you not do this for me? Right? Let's put a good example. I mean, for our elderly you know, ladies, you know, as a gentleman, you open the door for them, right? You know? But like some, some guy, you know, just open the door for you because you're carrying stuff, right? And then... Every time you go there, now you expect that person to open the door for you too, you know. But they're busy, they can't do anything. But like you call their name, hey Johnny, I'm waiting. <laughs> With that kind of attitude. It's like you have to gain because you did this for the other person, right? Is this already too much for everybody? Because most likely, like, you checkmark everything on a day. I myself did. Uh, and the unnatural or abusive acts to self and others. You know, that's where vile affections come in. That's where a lot of wrong things come in, right? Don't do anything unnatural or abusive, right? You know, parents, it's right, there's right way to discipline children, and there's an abusive way to discipline their children. Don't be abusive, you know? Do it the right way. Next one, seeking to create false impressions. Just be who you are, right? Don't try to be rich in front of people when you're not. Don't try to be all cool in front of people when you're not, right? Don't try to be too pretty, you know, too handsome when you're not. You know, just be who you are, right? You know? The Lord wants you just as who you are, right? If you're struggling with sin, you know, just ask for prayers, but don't tell everybody either. If you're doing good, just praise the Lord. Don't be prideful and telling people, hey, you know what? I led 1,000 people to the Lord this week. How about you? <laughs> What's the point of that conversation, right? You're just showing off yourself. Next, lusting and wondering eyes. You know, this is very important. I don't know about ladies too much. I think this is more to do with the guys because guys are more of a, you know, visual people, and then ladies are more of a feeling people, right? You know, I mean, just in general sense, right? So you got to watch your eyes. Watch what you look at, especially men. And nowadays, especially with the proliferation of all the Internet stuff, you better watch out where you're going, what you're looking on your phone, on your laptop, you know, anywhere, because you're going to have lusting or wandering eyes. If you're married, your eyes should just focus on your spouses, your wife and your husband, right? No reason to look at any other woman or man. Why'd you get married then? Number 17, if you were writing it down, shrinking from duty, right? 
as a Christian, you have a job to do. You have to pray, you have to read your Bible, you have to witness, and as a family structure, as a head of the household, father, mother, you know, children, you have your duty to do. At work, you gotta be a good testimony as well, wherever you are, you have to do your best. But if you sh go away from those things, then you're committing sin, you're not doing your best. A tendency to retaliate when crossed, right? Your first reaction, you feel like, oh, someone did me wrong. You have to retaliate right away. But you have that all the time, right? In California, especially driving everywhere, oh, that person crossed me, cut in front of me, right? You know, no signal. I mean, that's just an example. But a tendency to retaliate when crossed. Sometimes you have to just hold back and pray. Hold back and pray. Let's pray. Not just driving only, just in regular life. Know the full story, please. Don't go off at your first reaction. Those are the times when you sometimes get in big, big trouble. Just wait. Permitting things in your life you would not permit in the lives of other Christians. Man, it's like, yeah. I don't want that person to go to Vegas and do the slot machines, right? But I have to do it. I have to support my family, you know? We need some money. And then God gave me talent to do well with numbers, you know? Blackjack is my number. Poker, I know people's mind. God gave me that talent, so I have to do it. Permitting things, but if someone were to ask you, well, should I go do it? You guys say, never, you know? That's a sin. But you find justification to do it. Mm -mm. And being shallow or stingy or unclean in thoughts, right? Don't be shallow. Don't be stingy. No, you got to be generous when you're giving, especially to the Lord, right? And, you know, there's a lot more, you know, and then due to the time, you know, and then I'll just end with this. And I don't care attitude towards being caught or caught in sin or skipping responsibility. Don't have that. Oh, I don't care. I got caught. Like today, right? What are you doing with many sins in your life? Oh, preacher pointed me out, you know? It's not just me, though. Person sitting next to me, in front of me, behind me, they're all doing the same thing. It's all right, you know? Next week, you'll be a different sermon, so I'll be all right, you know? Like, I don't care attitude towards being caught in sin or skipping responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to deal with sin. It's our responsibility to get right with the Lord. And whatever all those sins are in your life, you have to get it right today. Don't be like, oh, I need to just wait it out until tomorrow. No. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, thou shalt he also reap. You want to reap as little as possible. That's my prayer. Because if you do confess your sins, God's going to give you mercy. You're going to grow as a Christian. And you're going to have a peace of mind. So Christians... Ask yourself, what am I doing with many sins in my life? Am I getting right with the Lord, or am I just continuing towards my own destruction? Let's pray. Dear Father, this sin, you die for it because of this sin, and we still struggle with it. We won't be free from it until we get rid of this body once and for all, until that day of redemption, until you come back, Lord. Each day, help us to judge ourselves. Help us to get right with you, Lord. Help us to literally see the list of sins that we need to be aware of on a daily basis. And help us to become more holy, Lord. You said, be holy for I am holy. Help us to be pure in all of our conversations, in our thoughts, in our speech, and in our actions, Lord. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. Bless the rest of the day and the services, and especially those who are Sick, Lord, going through illnesses, be with them, Lord. Heal them as soon as possible, according to your will, and be those who are traveling as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.